water. It's a simple enough substance, isn't it? Do you really understand how it works though? We're going to talk about the dynamics of water coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to go over the properties of water and how it relates to biomed and maybe your everyday life because water is different in different places around the world. Yeah, I guess you probably already knew that, but you didn't know that its properties are also different. So here I have regular tap water and I put it in this pan. Now, we generally know that water boils at 100 degrees C and it freezes at 0 degrees C, right? Well, that's wrong. <laughs> it's right if you are at sea level. That is correct. But if I was in, say, Denver, Colorado, you are up at 5,000 feet in elevation. Instead of water boiling at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it's now going to boil at 202 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's because at sea level, we are at 14.69 PSI. And Denver is about 12 PSI. So it's only 2.69 PSI less, but it affects the temperature that water boils at. And that can change how you're going to utilize the water. So if I wanted to cook a pan of rice up in an altitude, the water is going to boil off much faster at a lower temperature, so it's never going to get hotter than the 202 degrees. Isn't that crazy? So if I was going to cook a pan of rice and it's going to take, let's say, 15 minutes and I have to have one cup of water at sea level, above sea level, it could take 15 minutes, 16 minutes, and I need 1.25 cups of water because you're going to lose more water at the lower temperature and when you're at elevation it actually takes longer to cook something and it generally takes more water in the recipe as it is now this isn't a cooking class but guys the water the properties of water relates directly to biomed why is that well you can see it's not boiling right now and it's probably about room temperature but if i were to hook it up to a vacuum and guys, I've talked about it in other videos. We are at 14.69 PSI, which means air is pushing in at every angle at 14.69 pounds per square inch. If I were to add a vacuum inside the pan, the maximum vacuum you can achieve is 14.69 PSI because once you remove the pressure coming in because you basically are pulling molecules out of the chamber, once you remove all the molecules, the only difference in pressure is 14.69. So you can remove up to 30 inches of mercury, which is about 14 point something PSI. And that's the maximum vacuum you can achieve. When you are under a total vacuum, this water right here will boil at room temperature. I kid you not. It's the craziest thing, and I figured it out because I had a vacuum chamber sealer, and I used to prepare food, and the food would be slightly warmer than room temperature when it got vacuum sealed, and as I was vacuum chamber sealing it, it would boil in the bag. It's the craziest thing when you see it. So you have something like this bottle of water. I could stick this bottle in a vacuum chamber, and if you pull a total vacuum, if it's slightly warmer than what it currently is, it'll start boiling. It's very fun to do. So guys, how does that relate to Biomed? Well, this right here is the only way to increase the temperature of water. Now you guys know that water is one of the most efficient mediums for transferring energy as steam. And we use steam to sterilize things. And here I have a home version of a steam sterilizer. This is just a regular pressure vessel and we call it a pressure cooker. And notice here that there is either a weight or you have, uh, in this case, 
a detent spring and it adds different levels of down pressure on the spring. And what that guy will do, you can see right here is the valve. And this guy pushes down on a little spring loaded piston. And as I spin it, increasing the levels, you're increasing the amount of down pressure on that piston. So when the chamber gets to a certain pressure, it'll vent out. That's a safety mechanism. And there's also another safety mechanism just in case. So, you know, this thing turns into a bomb. If you filled it up to here with boiling hot water and there's no way of the steam to escape, it would continue building pressure until it explodes. So that's why we have one safety mechanism. We have two safety mechanisms on this guy. But this is how we increase the temperature of water to the level of sterilization, which if I remember correctly is about 275 degrees. Now you guys remember, I told you that here at sea level, water boils at about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I need to get that up to 275 degrees. This is how you do it. You add pressure, just like I can make water boil at room temperature by creating a vacuum with my vacuum pump back there. I can make it hotter than it normally gets by adding pressure. And I add pressure with this one with a down, uh, down pressure piston, but some of them have a weight and you turn it to different, uh, different types of weight. But guys, this pot here routinely gets hotter than 212 degrees. And we use this for cooking. And like I said, this is not a cooking class, but it's just the exact same with sterilization. We increase the temperature of steam because normally steam will just pew, evaporate into space. But by increasing the temperature and by doing that, we increase the pressure. You effectively create a means of sterilization. Water is cheap. It's efficient. It transfers energy very nicely and it doesn't degrade things around it. So as it doesn't require chemicals, it is a chemical. Water itself, and it's safe for us. That's why we use steam and so much sterilization. And that is also what you are technically doing when you pressure cook. If you're sealing like jars for food preservation, you are raising the temperature inside the jar hotter than 212 degrees at sea level, okay? So that's what we're doing is we're increasing the pressure inside and we're doing that by putting it in a pressure vessel so steam can get hotter than the temperature of boiling water normally if i were to put this on a stove and i could i could fill all the way up it doesn't matter the warmest that this is going to get is right around 212 degrees i need it to get to 275 so that's how we do it we add pressure and with pressure we can make it boil at a much hotter temperature so guys, next time you're playing around with water, remember, it's got some really unique properties. I'll go ahead and throw up a graph so that you guys can see the chart because at atmospheric pressure, it goes nice and slow. And as you add pressure, the temperature goes exponential. It's absolutely amazing. It's just one of those things you should understand about water because when it comes to steam sterilizers, if you are not getting your temperature, check your pressure. Because if you have pressure, you're going to get your temperature. It's just the way it works. It's a direct correlation, temperature and pressure. So if you don't get up to 275 degrees, check to make sure you have no leaks, which in this case, it would mean probably my lip seal on this pan, right? But with steam sterilizers, there are so many other components. There's valves, solenoids, bellows. There's all sorts of things that contain that pressure until the moment it's needed to be released. And just like on this guy, I've got different valves and seals and stuff that I have to check, keep clean, because if you don't keep it clean, it'll never get up to pressure and I'll never get up to the temperature necessary to sterilize the things like for food preservation. So guys, that's what I got for you. Water. It is not as simple as you think. When you change your altitude, you're changing the temperature that it reacts and it changes its form. So we all know that water comes in a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Those traits are changed based on your pressure. And it's commonly inferred that water boils at 100 degrees C. That is not true. If you're at a higher ele elevation, if you're in South America, if you are in Denver, Colorado, you are going to be boiling at a much lower temperature 
which is going to increase the amount of time it takes to cook your food. It's going to change the properties for your steam sterilizers because if you're getting a leak, your water is going to boil off. Your steam is going to boil off much, much lower temperature than here at sea level. Anyway, guys, I thought that was going to be just a little interesting thing. I, I wish I could demonstrate it to you, but safely I cannot. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So uh, there you have it. The properties of water. It's not what you thought it was. Thanks for watching, guys.